What's going on fine people? It's Jerry Travis Smith with another video and today we're going to have to have a serious conversation and it's about the eight things that I hate about Windows 11. Now Windows 11 is very pretty. I really wish they would just do a lot of what they did on Windows 11 on top of Windows 10. Not all of it and we'll get into that. But more importantly my problem is I'll be supporting this for the next nine years especially after Windows 10 goes out of support in 2025. And I'll have to be using it myself. So I really wish Microsoft would fix these eight things that aggravate the ever-loving crap out of me. Let's start with number one, the centered start menu and the centered taskbar items. Now here's the thing. I know that you can change it back to the left. I have. My biggest concern is that they are going to take away that ability. Why do I think that? Well, I don't have any concrete evidence, but I do know Microsoft, like Apple and everybody else, will sometimes phase something out over time. And if that were to happen, that would be catastrophic to me. The reason that the start menu makes a lot more sense on the left side is Fitz Law. Now, for those of you that may not know what that is, it's basically the fact that when you're moving a mouse, it's a lot easier to stop and be accurate whenever you get to the edge of the screen when the mouse can't go any farther. Because you bump into the edge and things stop, and then you can move the mouse up or down a lot easier. Now, if you're like some crazy gamer and just super accurate all the time, okay, good for you. But honestly, I have taught people from third grade all the way up to the collegiate level and there's a lot of those people when they have to use a mouse or a trackpad struggle with stopping on a specific target. I'm pretty sure Microsoft put a lot of money into deciding where to put the start menu in 1994 with Windows NT 3.51 and that's how it got on the left side and then Windows 95 came out and Windows 95 was the mainstream Windows. And it worked great. The people that made that decision, I'm sure, were thinking about Fitz Law. As I said, it's easy enough to fix and put it on the left for now. Let's walk through how you actually do it. So, you click on the start menu or click in the box that says click here to search and type ALI. Now, if you go too far and type ALIGN, this won't work. But if you type ALI, it'll pop up and say controls alignment of the taskbar. And then you change it from center to left in that menu item. So it's not like it's the hardest thing ever to fix, but come on people, put it to the left and leave it there. Fits law, baby, fits law. The second thing about Windows 11 that drives me absolutely insane is that weather widget that they put in the left side of the taskbar where the start menu should be by default. Okay, it's not the weather widget itself that I don't like. Matter of fact, I like the weather widget. I like to look over there and see my weather. The problem is when I mouse over it accidentally, it pops up and takes up a third of the screen to show me news and other stuff. Why is that the default behavior? Microsoft even did that in Windows 10 with the last release. They added that little widget and it was the same deal. You moused over it and it popped up and got in the way just from mousing over you. You didn't even have to click on it. I got a call from a coworker, and she said, can you please make it so that doesn't pop up every time I accidentally put my mouse down there. So I trotted down there and fixed it. But the problem is you can't disable it in Windows 11. And besides that, why is it the default behavior anyway? Honestly, I feel like that Windows 10 and Windows 11 teams sit in the cafeteria and glare at one another instead of work together because a lot of times something really nice will be added in windows 10 somehow that functionality doesn't make it over into windows 11 for a long time i don't know i just don't know the third thing about windows 11 that drives me absolutely insane is all the apps that show up in my start menu that i have not installed and have no intention to install Things like Spotify and Adobe Express. And there are plenty others too. I get why they're showing up. Microsoft is basically giving away Windows 10 and Windows 11 
and they have to make money somehow, or they feel like they do. So they take money from these companies to have those apps show up. The idea is that some user will click on the app accidentally or, you know, maybe be like, oh, what's this? And click on it and end up, you know, buying some software or subscribing to Spotify or whatever. And that's fine. But Microsoft, come on. You need to roll it into Microsoft 365 subscriptions or let me buy a version of Windows 11 where I don't have to look at things that I didn't install myself and don't want. Is that too much to ask? I'll give you money either way. We all know that YouTube makes more money off of YouTube premium subscribers than they do the advertising. So come on Microsoft, hook us up. I'm not trying to get anything for free. I haven't pirated a single piece of anything from any company since 2004 when I got my teaching job and actually had money to buy software. Now, I may be alone in that, but I'm sure there's plenty of people, professionals that make enough money that would love to be able to buy no unwanted apps popping up on their start menu. Yeah, it's that big a deal when it comes down to it. Item number four that I absolutely hate about Windows 11 is the Settings app. Now, Microsoft started that foolishness in Windows 8. They made it so that it's touch screen friendly. You know, touch inputs work. And you don't have to have a mouse and be very accurate. Here's the thing though. How many people that actually use a touch screen with Windows need to ever change settings? Most touch screen users are not power users. They have a nerd or a neighbor or something like that that usually makes any changes to their settings that they need changed either out of convenience or just stuff they don't like. But the touchscreen people, I'm telling you, most of them are not the ones dealing with settings anyway. I was poking around on Windows 3.1 the other day on one of my older systems and went into settings and it was so nice. Actually, it was control panel. It's so bad that I've kind of forgotten about control panel. Things were better then, I'm sorry. Okay, going all the way back to Windows 3.1. You had your little icons and they were all in color. So you could glance over and based on the color, you could know uh, what you were clicking on without even having to read the, the description of the icon. And then Windows 95 was the same way. And over time, yeah, with each version of Windows, there was more and more settings, but that's okay because the operating systems do more and more and Windows is just like everybody else. They've upgraded and whatnot. But this settings app now is crazy. You have to scroll down just to find settings. They do have that search bar at the top of the settings on the left, and they've got the little categories, but a lot of the categories, it's, it's a guesswork where the setting is that you want. So I usually just search. The problem with that is it'd be a lot easier if I had to do something in my lab with 20 machines, because I can't automate a lot of that stuff right now. If I could just, do two or three clicks and make the changes. Instead of having to click in that box, lean over to the keyboard, have to type. It may not seem like a lot to a lot of people, but it drives me nuts. This settings app is crazy. Bring back the control panel, it worked fine. And this isn't really necessarily a problem just with Windows 11, but it seems like it's gotten worse and worse. <sighs> Item number five about Windows 11 that drives me crazy is that they've clustered the volume, the brightness, and the Wi-Fi on the system tray. Why is that a big deal? Well, if I use my mouse and not a trackpad and I'm really accurate, I used to be able to click on the volume control, for example. Then you move your mouse just a little bit because the volume slider popped up right above where you had clicked because it knew that you were clicking on volume, right? because you clicked on the little volume icon. Now, if you click on volume, brightness, or Wi-Fi, this box pops up. And there's a bunch of options in the box, and that's great, but I have to move my mouse again and find that slider that's farther away than it would have been with the old control and change my volume or my screen brightness. I have to change the screen brightness, and that slider is even farther up. And if I want to do something to the Wi-Fi, I got to go to the top of this box. 
And from there, I can turn the Wi-Fi off or pick a different SSID, a different network, and that's all well and good. But come on, Microsoft. For those of us that have used the system tray since Windows 95 or Windows NT 3.51, we've always used it that way. You're dealing with, you know, 25, 30 years, 27 years, I don't know, something like that. But please, Microsoft, why did you have to cluster those three things? Item number six that I don't like, and this will be no surprise to any Windows user, it's been around a while, is the right-click menu has been destroyed. It's like so anemic. Now, my right-click menu historically in all the previous versions of Windows since Windows 95 has gotten really big because I put a lot of things on that context menu. I install a lot of software. Most nerds have a lot of software they install. Now when I right click, most of that stuff's not there unless I take an extra step and go to show more options. Show more options. One more extra step. Gotta move that mouse. Show more options. Come on, really? Why? Are you trying to simplify it for people that don't even right click? Trust me, uh, going back to what I said a while ago, I have taught people from third grade all the way through the collegiate level, and the vast majority of users do not right click. And I hear some of you screaming, Oh, my teenager knows everything about computers. No, no, they really don't. A lot of them have no clue that right click is a thing. They've been using tablets and Chromebooks for so long, and right-click's not really a, a thing with those. Chromebook has right-click, but it's not really a big deal because they know you have to do the two-finger tap on your trackpad to get that to pop up. Most people never do that. Okay, I promise. I promise. I've seen it for years and years. So please give me the option to bring back a full right-click menu. And you can leave it simple for everybody else. Just give me the option. You probably won't because I know it takes another engineer to add that feature and test it and all that good happy stuff. But please, for the love of all that's good and holy, fix that for me. I would be so grateful. And a lot of other power users and people that have used Windows since Windows 95 would be really grateful too. Item number seven actually involves the right click menu, but this is so egregious that I felt it needed its very own item. Why have you turned cut, copy, and paste from words that say cut, copy, and paste into little pictures? And the pictures are not even really that far apart. I get that you're probably trying to make it easier to localize Windows. It's the same reason you took start off of the start menu, but that's another gripe of mine entirely and has nothing to do specifically with Windows 11. But anyway, it was so much easier to tell people when I was teaching them how to use Windows to right click on something and click on copy. Because most people that are learning to use a computer can read. Instead now, we have iconography that is not universally understood by anybody. Trust me, I'm a Microsoft Office power user, so it kind of makes sense to me, but even I have to pause and say, wait a minute, no, oh, there's the scissors, that's cut, and copies the two pieces of paper, and paste is the clipboard or something? I don't know. See, I, I'm not actually looking at Windows 11 right now, so I don't even know. And you're probably thinking, well, you could get used to it. Yeah, I could. But the words cut, copy, and paste were so much easier when you're teaching somebody to use Windows. Just like it was a lot easier to say, click the start menu down there in the left. They could look and see start, and they'd be like, oh, oh, okay, yeah. Uh, well, you know, I, I went off on that tangent again. It's really a sore spot with me. You can ask any of my nerd friends. I bring it up, you know, every month or so in casual conversation. Put the word start back. It's not going to happen. It's gone. Please, Microsoft, we're not too far in for you to put the actual words cut, copy, and paste back on that right-click menu. Item number eight that I hate about Windows 11 is the fact that it was touted to be optimized for these new chips with the uh, efficiency cores and power cores. And in most cases, it's slower. Don't tout it as a feature. You know, Intel's pretty excited about it. AMD will most likely be doing the P-core, E-core thing. 
it's just, you know, the way to go, especially on laptops, you know. If you're plugged into the wall all the time with a big powerful desktop, who cares? But, you know, for your mobile devices, it should help battery life. But, you know, I did testing in my last video, and for the most part, Windows 10 performed better. Come on, man, tune your stuff up. You know, if that's supposed to be the big reason, oh, it's more performant for Windows 11, at least make that work. Okay? I, I mean, I don't know. It just frustrates me. Don't make it seem like people can upgrade to Windows 11 and get these big performance boosts. At least let developers know what they need to do in order to have Windows 11 take advantage of the P-Core and E-Core thing. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. The eight things that I hate about Windows 11. I hope somebody at Microsoft listens to me and fixes some of this. They probably won't, but I really do love Windows. I mean, I cut my teeth in computing on Windows 95. It was my first real experience. At the vocational school, we had Windows 3.1 and I played with it, but my first computer I got myself on election day, 1996, had Windows 95. I fired it up and I saw the little drums beat while it said, wait, we're getting some settings ready and it took forever. But then there was that start menu and I clicked on it and started poking around. And I, I was enthralled from that moment forward. Windows has never been perfect and it won't be because that's just how things go. But Windows 11 has a lot of things going in the wrong direction for people like me. The champions that help everybody else out, that teach other people. Please, Microsoft, help. Help me. You know that I'm telling the truth about some of this. Now that I'm done ranting and pleading with Microsoft, let's do something a little positive. I'd like to thank everybody that has helped me get to 500 subs. I never thought I would get that high. I just like to post content where I show you things or help you fix something. That's my goal. I enjoy that. But watching that subscriber count go up is great. I'm, it, it just, it's a rush. It's a different kind of thing. Now I want to make it to 1K because we know when you get 1,000 subs, it unlocks a lot of things for a YouTube channel. So let's see if we can grow the channel. If you guys don't care, share my content if it helps you. Put it on Twitter, put it on Facebook, put it on Instagram if Instagram lets you put videos. I don't know. I don't use Instagram. But thank you all from the bottom of my heart. I thought about doing a 500 subscriber special. I mean, what have I got to talk about? I'm not really that interesting of a guy. So, But anyway... Thanks to each and every one of you, and I look forward to seeing you all as we march to 1K. <laughs> Until next time, people, you guys have a fantastic day.